Looking for a job? Well, the U.S. has plenty, but not enough people to fill them, apparently. According to the recent JOLTS survey, there were 6.66 million open jobs in June. Industries like construction and manufacturing have a tough time finding skilled labor in this tight labor market. It's affecting the housing market, for example. Our next guest's charity recently donated $600,000 to individuals pursuing a skilled trade. And he knows a thing or two about tough jobs. Of course, with us, our friend Mike Rowe, the host of Somebody's Gotta Do It. He's the head of Micro Works and former host of Dirty Jobs. Michael, always good to see you. Welcome back. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Why, do you th why are we in a situation now where uh, we have this disconnect? There are a lot of jobs out there. They're scrambling to find workers, but there are still people looking for jobs at this point. What's your because, take on that? Because the definition of a good job is completely within our purview to define. But we almost never do it in a way that's an accurate representation of the times that we're currently living in. So, in my view, when I started MicroWorks, it was 2008 on Labor Day. There were 2.3 million jobs, according to the feds, that existed at that point in time. Of those jobs, 75% did not require a four-year degree. They required training. So even at the height of the recession, when the headline news was all about unemployment, everywhere I was going, I saw help wanted signs. So for me, the disconnect really began around the issue of PR. What does an aspirational good job look like in 2008, right. right? So today it's 2018, 10 years have gone by. We have, as you say, 6.6 .6 million available jobs, uh, proving perhaps that I've done more harm than good. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have a pithy answer for you, but I can tell you this, everything is politicized today, including the skills gap. The existence of 6.6 .6 million jobs is a very inconvenient truth for a lot of people who believe that opportunity is dead. And so what happens is when we try and talk about the existence of this much opportunity, half the country will say, well, it's because the jobs are lousy or employers are greedy and don't pay enough. And the other half will say, ah, it's because people are fundamentally lazy and don't want to work. Mm. Both miss the point. The opportunities are real and they're there, and I've done my best to reward them every year. There's been a real societal push for everybody to get a college degree, hasn't there? I mean, I'm old. When I was in high school, I went to school in New Hampshire, big libertarian state, and the guidance counselors would tell some kids, don't go to college. Go to community college. Go learn sure. how to fix a car. Go do this. Trade school. Go to a trade yeah. school. I doubt that happens. As, I don't know if it probably still happens in New Hampshire, but I doubt that happens in a lot of the part of the country. It you, I think you're right. It's been those kind of jobs have been minimized and, and they shouldn't be. They're so crucial and well, satisfying. You're talking about the part of our labor force that keeps the lights on, keeps the plumbing working. You know, we're talking about jobs, not classic manufacturing jobs, although they fall under that rubric. You're really talking about jobs that can't be outsourced. The opportunities that my foundation looks for it goes beyond guidance counselors and beyond parents and beyond peer pressure. We're just trying to reward work ethic because I've always believed and still believe that it's still very much for sale. And if you find a kid who's willing to show up early, stay late, and actually learn a skill that's in demand, then that opportunity simply, there's never been a better time to be an ambitious, well-trained plumber. So You'll see for yourself. If you need one, call one. See oh, how long yeah, it takes to get, get one. And they're yeah. expensive. Yeah. They pay well. <laughs> sure. so, so, Mike, where should that public relations campaign for the good job of 2018, where should that originate from? Uh, should it be the private sector? Should it be the government? I mean, I don't want to politicize this either. But somebody's got to start saying, hey, you know what? Take a look at these jobs. And, guys, yeah. we might give you the training for it as well. Anybody who's got skin in the game. So obviously elected officials ha have a role to play in this, and so does the private sector, and so do parents, and so do guidance counselors. There was a campaign, I, I bet you remember this. Remember the Indian on the side of the road? Yep. Weeping, right? Sure. That was a very, very effective, maybe the most effective PR campaign of all time, and it came out of Keep America Beautiful. Long before green was a thing, our country had a horrible littering problem. Like, we just left our stuff behind everywhere. We needed a concerted effort to redefine our collective relationship with littering. The country now needs a concerted effort to redefine its collective relationship with the definition of a good job. 
And so there's not a there's not a glib answer. It has to happen on a lot of different fronts. But that campaign, Keep America Beautiful, 1953, that was the result of a consortium. There was federal money, but Coca-Cola was involved. Big businesses were involved and concerned individuals. And together, they actually moved the needle. The problem is, it really took about 12 to 15 years before anything demonstrably happened. Right. You're turning yep. a tanker around. Exactly. You're talking about perception. So the short answer is everybody all the time for the next decade. <laughs> there, I'm glad we solved that. <laughs> no problem. Happy to help.